I would say that this is one of the most practical problems to solve because you will find its application in a lot of different places. You can also apply it to your real life schedule and you will see it being applied by a lot of institutions. The basic idea is you are given a set of courses and some prerequisites. Now you have to determine if you can take a certain route to determine that you can take up all of these courses. Sounds familiar, right? This is how you take up all of your courses in your institution. So how do you go about solving it? Let's find it out. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. You are given some courses, let us say N, and then you are given a list of prerequisite pairs. They are given as A comma B. It means that to take course B, you must first complete course A. So given such kind of a list, you have to return true if you can finish all of the courses or you need to return a false. How does the input look like? For example, this is my entire list of prerequisite pairs. So what is this telling you? 1 comma 4 means that there is a course called 4 and there is a course called 1. So 1 comma 4 means to complete course 4, you must first complete course 1. And now if you go ahead, you see another line 9 comma 4. And if you try to plot it out, how it will start to look like. It means that once you complete course 1, then you can take on course 4. Also, course 9 is a prerequisite of course 4. That means there will be some course 9 that you have to also complete to complete course 4. This is how you can look at the problem visually. This is telling me I need to complete these two courses before I can even look at course 4. So how do you interpret all of this entire input? I have two different inputs available. So first of all, let us look at the first input set. What I just did is I took each of the prerequisite pairs and then constructed some kind of a dependency graph. What do you see over here? 1 comma 4. This is represented over here. 9 comma 4 is represented here. 4 comma 5 is represented here. Then you have 5 comma 8, then 2 comma 3 and then so on. You get the idea. What are you seeing over here? You cannot just take up course 8, right? It has a dependency of 5 and 3. What about 5? To complete course 5, you need to complete course 4. And then you will need 1 and 9. Similarly, just look at course 3. To complete this, you have a dependency of 3 other courses. So that is the problem statement. Given such kind of a scenario or a dependency diagram, you have to tell me if you can take up all of the courses. Is it even possible that you start at any course and then you are able to complete all of them? For this particular test case, you can see that it is possible. How? First of all, I can start off with courses that don't have any dependency, right? So now, once I have done this, once I completed these two courses, I can now take up course 4 as well. So okay, I can do course 4. I did 2 and 7, so I can do course 3 also. What next? Since I did course 4, I can take up 5. Since I have done both 5 and 3, I can take up 8 also. So you were able to take up all of the courses. And this is a happy case. You must also understand how does a negative case look like. Take a look at the second test case. I have all of these prerequisites. And now I will use the same logic to create the dependency graph. What do you see over here? 1 comma 2. That means to complete course 2, I need to complete course 1. That is why I have a dependency defined like this. Then I have 2 comma 4. To complete course 4, I need to complete course 2. I have 4 comma 1. That means to complete course 1, I need to complete course 4. This is how I have created the entire graph. So where do you begin with? I will begin with a course that does not have any dependency. I can take it up. And now, can I take up course 5? Not yet, because I have completed 3, but I haven't completed course 1 yet. So how do I complete course 1? If you notice, course 1 have a dependency on course 4. Can you take course 4? No, because course 4 have a dependency on course 2. And course 2 have a dependency on course 1. So this is kind of a deadlock. So I cannot take up any other course. What I'm left with? 
I am in a deadlock situation and I cannot consume all of the courses available. This is an invalid case and that is where you return a false. So what does the problem boil down to? You are given two directed graphs and you have to tell me if you are able to traverse all of the nodes. Basically, you have to determine if you can find a cycle in the graph or not. Notice that this looks like a cycle, but it is not because all of the nodes are flowing in the same direction. But for this, you have a cycle available. This cycle will prevent you from taking up all of the courses. So for the first test case, you return true as your answer. And for the second test case, you return false as your answer. This is how you can simplify the problem. And that is the first step that you should be taking before you approach it. How do you now go about solving this problem? First of all, let us try out the most naive approach. That is traversing each of the path and determining if you can cover up all of the courses. And how do you do that? You can do it via a depth first search. Basically, you will take up this graph and then you start from each of the nodes that are independent. So you start from, from node one and now Try to do a depth first search. How far you can go? You can do 1, then 4, then 5, and then 8. You can also do 1, 4, 3, and then an 8. Now try to go on the next node. You can start from 9, then you can go to 4, then 5, and then 8. Or you can do 9, 4, 3, and then an 8. Similarly, you can start from node 2, then you go to 3, and then you can go to 8. And then you can go to node 7, then a 3, and then an 8. What you are doing is, you are doing a depth first search from each of the node available. But do you see the problem? You might have encountered some nodes multiple number of times. So in the worst case scenario, the time complexity will turn out to be order of n square. Similarly, for an invalid case, how will the depth first search look like? First of all, you start off from the node that is independent. You start from 3 and then where you can go? You can go to node 5. That is it you don't have any other independent node available. So this approach stops over here and you can determine that, okay, this is not a valid scenario and you have to return a false. But the main idea is we have to reduce the order of n square time complexity. We need a better way to approach this problem. The problem with the depth first search is that you might encounter a node multiple number of times. That is where a breadth first search is often helpful because you are putting all of your elements in a queue and then you're popping them one by one. It ensures that you are traversing a node only once. So can you apply it over here? What I have over here is a prerequisite list. You know it from the input set. Now to perform a breadth of search, first of all, you will need a queue. And this queue often defines the node that we have to get started with. For a tree, it is often the root node. And for a graph, you can begin from any node. But we only have to begin from the nodes that do not have any prerequisites. So what do we do? I also maintain a map that is going to store a node and the total number of n degree. That means the total number of prerequisites for any course. Now, how do you populate this map? Go over each of this list. What is this telling you? It is telling me that to complete course 4, I need to complete course 1. So I can start populating my map. I can say that, okay, for node four, I have at least one prerequisite, correct? Now look at the next element. You have nine comma four. That means I already have this node four available here. It's prerequisite one. So increment this value. It is telling me that to complete course four, I need two prerequisites. I have not yet determined what are those and how will I complete them? My objective is to just populate this map. Look up the next entry. Course 5 requires course 4. So course 5 is not in the map. So I add it over here and it needs one prerequisite. 5 comma 8. I add node 8 and it has one prerequisite. 2 comma 3. So I will add node 3 over here and it has one prerequisite. 3 comma 8. I already have a node 8. So I will just increment this prereq. 7 comma 3. I already have a 3 here. So I will increment this. The last is 4 comma 3. I already have a 3 here, so I will increment this. I got my map and this map is telling me how many incoming or how many prerequisites do I have for each of the courses. Check it out. For course 3, I have 3 prerequisites. 
for course three, I have three prerequisites. Now you can begin your actual processing. You know that you will have N nodes, correct? Those are the N courses. For any course that is not available over here, you can add those to your queue because that is a course you can begin with. So if you notice, I have all of these four courses available. All of these courses are not available in my map. So they go in my queue. I can begin anywhere, right? It's up to me. And this is where you start applying BFS. How do you do that? You start a loop until your queue is completely empty. The first thing that you do is you pop out an element. I popped an element one. So check out its neighbors. One has a child of four. It means if you complete course one, you can complete course four. You are solving one prerequisite. So go in your map, check the neighbor and reduce this count. So what I'm saying, I am saying this course re got its prerequisite reduced by one. One does not have any more neighbors. So I am done with it. Pop out the next element now. Check out nine. Does nine have neighbors? Yes, it has a neighbor four. You have four in your map. That means what you will do is just decrement this count by one. As soon as you do it, the prerequisite of course four becomes zero. It means I have completed its prerequisites. So now what I can do, I can take up this course and add it to my queue. So what will happen? This course four, this will go to the queue and it will get completely removed from the map. I have now taken care of course nine also. So I am done. This way you will keep on incrementing. Take out the next element that is two. For course two, you can take up course three now. That means you can reduce this by one. This value now becomes two. And that's it. Two doesn't have any more neighbors. So you see what is happening over here. I still cannot take up course three because it still has two prerequisites. But eventually, as we keep on solving, we will be able to figure it out. Pop out the next element. You get seven. Check out the neighbors of seven. That is three again. So for this three, do a minus minus. This becomes one. You don't have any more neighbors available. So you are done. Your queue is still not empty. You can take up course four. So try to take up course four. As soon as you take up course four, you have two neighbors available, course five and course three. Check out both of them in your map. You have both of them available. So what will you do? You will do a minus minus on each of them. As soon as you do it, the value becomes zero. As soon as the value is zero, you can add these elements to your queue. It is simply telling me that I can now take up these courses because I have completed all the prerequisites. So what will happen next? You can do it yourself. You will pop out the queue. You get element five. Five has a dependency on eight. So this changes to one. You will pop out the next element. This is three. Three has a neighbor of eight. So eight is already one and this becomes zero. As soon as this becomes zero, this will go in your queue. You will pop it out and it has no more neighbors. You have covered all of your courses and your queue is empty. That is a completely happy case. And you have determined that I can take up all of my courses. You only iterated through each of the nodes only once, correct? How about an invalid case? These are my prerequisites and this is my graph. Once again, I take my map and my queue. Start to populate this map using your queue. I have one comma two. So I'm saying node two has one in degree. Two comma four. I am saying node four has one in degree. Four comma one. I am saying node one has one in degree. The last two pairs just tell me that node five has two in degree. So far, so good. Where can you begin with? You iterate through all of the nodes and see that, okay, node three is not present. So you take up this node and you will add it to your queue. Fine. You got a starting point. Now start your BSS. You pop out this element, check the neighbors of three. The three has one neighbor five. So go to this map and reduce this count by one. That's it. You cannot proceed further. You are done with element three and your queue is completely empty. What do you do? You haven't traversed all of your nodes yet. You still have elements remaining in your map. That is immediately telling you that it is not possible to traverse all of the courses. You cannot travel your entire graph. So you can immediately return a false. This method is also known as the Khan's algorithm and it is also known commonly as the topological sort. So this method or this particular problem covers so many different concepts. 
Let us now quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this sample prerequisite list that is passed in as an input parameter to the function can finish. Notice that I have also represented how this graph will actually look like. And this is my queue and the map that I will be using. So where do you begin with? First of all, you create your adjacency list. This list is going to represent your graph. In the next step, I go over each of my prerequisite list and I will populate my map. Instead of a map, you can also take an array because even in an array, you can point at each of the index using the array index, right? So you populate this map and then you will create your queue. This is your BFS queue from which you will pop all of the elements. And notice, what elements do I add to the queue? Any element that has an in degree of zero, any element that does not have any dependency, those elements get added to the queue. So in this queue, I will add the element one and I will add the element seven, correct? After that, you have the standard BFS pattern. You run a while loop until your queue is completely empty. You pop out an element and look at its neighbors. For each of the neighbor, you do an in degree minus minus and if the in degree becomes zero, you put this element in your queue. And that is how you will keep on going. And at the end, you can determine if it is possible to take up all of the courses or not. The time complexity of this particular solution is order of n, where n is the total number of courses. And you can see we only iterate over each of the courses only once. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n, because in the worst case, I might have to take up my map that comprises of all of the end nodes. So just keep all of these things in mind. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say what makes this problem so different and so very special. That is because you can test out several different concepts when you approach this problem. You're thinking about graphs. You're thinking about directed graphs. You're thinking about cycles in a graph. You can test the DSS knowledge and you can also test the breadth first knowledge. Along with it, you are also experimenting with the queue data structure. So only if you have a good understanding of all of these topics, you can easily solve this problem. And you can think about it. The interviewer can take up this problem and then navigate and question you in any direction that they want. So that is what makes this problem super important. And you should be familiar with all of these concepts. What do you feel about it? And have you seen any other problem which involves a lot of different concepts? Tell me everything in the comment section below and it will become a really good collection when you are coming back to this video and looking at all of the similar problems. It will be very, very interesting. And talking about interesting things, do check the top link in the video description. I have a lead code navigator which tells you how you can solve all the problems and what should be the path that you are taking while solving all of these problems. This is a very helpful resource that can help you during your interview preparations. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And remember, you can now schedule a one-to-one -one session with me and we can literally talk about almost anything. So looking forward to meeting with you and until my next video, see ya.